This is QCC alum David Russell with Joe Massey, the Queensboro alumni game about to begin. Back for another year of Tiger basketball. Good to have you back, Joe. Yeah, it's good to be back. And um, we have uh, the alumni game as we've had every year here. And, you know, interesting, Dave, a couple of these alumni we were just watching uh, on the court. Well, you know, a half a year or whatever, that's a long time. You can't say just a half a year ago, but they'll be here tonight. It's fun seeing Stephen Bruton and Kayvon McDonald in alumni games. It, it will be fun to can see. Can we just watch these guys? Yeah, it would be fun to see uh, if they still uh, could come out with the same fervor for this type of game. <laughs> and the legal, uh, well, we couldn't even get through the, the opening tip without a whistle. By the way, it's like eight months since they played, so... Um, no, they finish in February. Well, they finish in February, March, April, yeah. May, June, July, August. Yeah, it's about eight months, and it'll be interesting to see what their uh, what their viewpoint is on being an alumni. There's a quick basket. Two nothing, white team leading. But 70 degrees out today. Usually we come to this gym and it's like 30 degrees outside. And I have the big fan on in the corner over there. Jarek Bow from downtown. Now, Jared Bow, I remember very well, and he would do that type of thing there. Jarek Bow was here for the Larry Dantzler years, two of them. This big guy, Pichardo, uh, he, he scored the first basket for the White Club, and he has been here every year, and I have to commend him for that, and he keeps himself in good shape, as you see. There's a foul being indicated. Early foul. Clock is still running. I like it. Keep it running. The man throwing it in for the blue team is uh, uh, Ben Choapon, mm -hmm. and he was the coach of LaGuardia, but he won't be this year, Dave. No. And he misses a three as you talk about him. No, no teams for LaGuardia this year. Very disappointing. Sanjay Carter lays it in. 4-3 white team. And now so we, we have uh, the current Queensboro coach, Carl Amengo, wearing 15 for the white team. And his rival of the fears, Ben Choba Pond on the blue team. Bravo with the rebound. Nice pass ahead, Carter again. <laughs> These aren't always the prettiest to watch, but they're fun. Yeah. Bravo I'll, puts I'll it in. Always get a chance to watch Bravo play, and I enjoy it. Johnny Bravo. He's fun. He's a big, strong guy. And, uh, and reaches in there. Oh. Oh. Nice passing there. Combination of a Mango teaming up with the other fella. Maybe one too many between a Mango and Carter. And Carter's foot was on the line. He, he was on the line when he took that second pass. Maybe they hold a little back in this game for when they face the new team. Hold a little back, right? And they try to punish the new guys. Remember the one we did here two years ago where the alumni won by 30? Well, that's what's funny because when Bruton plays, uh, if he plays in that second game, Stephen Bruton, he'll be playing against guys he played with last year. <laughs> Bravo. Go inside. Uh. No good. Everything but the basket, as they say. White team still leading 6-3, and Chobapon picks off the pass from a mango. That was a very poor pass by Carl. <laughs> and Chobapon with the wild jumper. And a very poor shot by Chobapon. There's a nice pass from a mango to Carter. Well, that, he likes that, Carter. He likes to get ahead of the field there. They're playing a zone defense, Dave, 2-3. <laughs> You're really analyzing this. Playing a 2-3 zone because they have the big guy in the middle. Look at that nice pass. And Jarek Bow with all five points for the blue team. Bow showing that uh, he was came here ready to play. Well, give and go and bravo off glass. And that's what I say about that play. Bravo. That was nice. 
Good effort from the guys early on, and they get away with the push down low. Early on, until they start running out of gas, some huh. of them. Well, you see, they changed up the format of the NBA All-Star Game because people got tired of watching games that were like 195 to 170. So now it's going to be like street ball, and they're going to have but guys picking know, the teams. As Bo misses a three. I, I, the alumni game? Oh, the uh, regular NBA, game. The regular. I think they're going to have LeBron You know, James the alumni game I'd love to see because I'd love to see guys like Havlicek play, you know. Air ball to three. And Bravo thought about the three. Now a little spin move. And everybody was in the backcourt just watching that. Counted and the foul. Once again, Bravo showing us that you don't just get out of the play after you give up the ball. He's always ready to get the pass back. It was right at the basket, and they got an easy two and the foul. And some of those things have been lost uh, in today's game a little bit. You know, staying alert to get that pass back uh, after you make a nice pass, things like that. Bravo finishes a conventional three-point play. Where's the mid-range game gone in today's game? It's all three-pointers and it's, layups. It's a different game. Mm-hmm. Straight on three, no good. Rebounded by a mango. And some of those guys are legends in their own mind, by the way. <laughs> we see that at all levels. And a foul. Yeah, well, I'm not a big fan of some of the attitudes today. You know, I, I, I like Oscar Robertson and Wolf Frazier and Jerry West. And, you know, I saw those guys play, so I'm not impressed. <laughs> a lot of the coaches aren't uh, crazy about the attitudes. If you read George yeah. Carl's book, you probably would get a kick I out just, of that. You know, Sports Illustrated, uh, that big center, uh, Dwight Howard, talking about how tough he's had it. Give me a break. <laughs> Bravo trying to go outside, misses a three. And Chobapond has it taken away. Now they, they'll try to turn it back as quickly as they can, and uh, there was no lane there for him to drive, so he took it out. Say, Bruton has the long arms. Eh? So after all of that, the white team has it back. A little bounce pass, Bibb and Shrestha lays it in. Yep. And Shrestha is an actor now, does a little TV and stage acting. You can see why, he's a good looking that. kid. Young man. So you would cast him? I would. Bruton misses a three, Bo with yeah, the offensive you know, rebound and then... You know, something you say that, because when he came in the arena, I said, look, that kid looks like a, an actor or something. I, I really did, he's a good, look, good looking guy. You know? 15 to five. As far as guys go, anyway. <laughs> Blue team trying to cut into the lead, and oh. a, a hard foul. No easy layups in this alumni game. Yeah, I don't think Teron can commit easy fouls anymore because <laughs> he's pretty big now. He's got a lot of lot of girth to him. And he wasn't that weight when he played, but, you know, a couple of years on the bench will beef you up a little guys bit. Guys usually put on weight as opposed yeah. to lose weight after yeah. they... Play. He still looks good, bless him, but he's bigger than he used to be. I'm sure he gives these current guys a handful in practice. He's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. I've known him for a long time now. I'm talking about uh, 17 years, for, for goodness sake. I wasn't going to name the number. I would. Okay. I'm proud of knowing him. And he's, he, he used to hit that left-hand shot. Now it's a little short, so. And when he used to miss, he would at least hit the rim. 15 Here, to 5. Here's Stephen Bruton. And Bo he to gave the it basket. Up. He gave it up. McDonald. It's rest of flew by him. McDonald is short. Bruton, I guess, isn't playing anywhere right now, right? Uh, in terms of going That's on where anywhere. he is as Lattimore hits, and it's 17-5, white team. But, you know, I would have liked to see Steven develop a little more here. He had that terrific outside shot. 
McDonald puts it in. And Joba Pond after a steal. Yeah, I, I think Joba Pond knows how to do everything hard. <laughs> I think he had a good time in last year's game here too. And the real veteran Pichardo lays it in there. 19-9 white team. About eight minutes in, Choba Pond off glass, no good, trying to do a little Tim Duncan. Yeah, he got too much of the back of the rim. Lattimore again, 21-9. Tim Duncan's not playing anymore, right? No, he, he's not. Okay. We're gonna miss him, by the way. We're gonna miss Tim Duncan. Bruton. We saw that a lot in two years. Well, he could do that, you know, and I, I, like I said, I would have liked to see him develop a little more because I really think he could have went on and probably played a Division II ball somewhere or something like that. Well, there's still a chance. Still is, yeah. but he has to keep himself in that frame of mind. Mm -hmm. It's Resta puts it in. The timeout, give these guys a little breather. White team leading 23-11. 11-18 to go in the first half. Well, a nice pace so far. And it's a fun game. And it's moving, yeah. It's moving. These guys are breaking up some passes. They're not just watching guys take threes for half an hour. Carl, uh, Carl Lomengo, one of the first people into the building today and uh, comes over and says hello immediately. And uh, he is a gentleman and a wonderful guy too who I've known a long time. We think of him as a young coach, and he is. He's, this is going to be his fifth season coaching. Well, I'm going to throw the number in there again, even though you don't want me to. I, I know Carl for 17 years, <laughs> too. So. That's why he and Simpson are sitting on the bench. Hey, there's Bruton. Bruton for three. I think he's got something Bruton. <laughs> look at, look at the mango. size of Bruton. You know, look at the size of Bruton. I mean... You figure he could do a lot of things, right? Right, Dave? Yeah, and Lattimore with six points quietly for the white team. Chobapon left alone. You can't do that. You can't leave him alone. He's a sneak. Shrestha puts it in. By the way, as coach of LaGuardia, he was alone, huh? He, he, he did a good job. He had them up there in first place. Yeah, about back-to-back -back CUNY titles. As Bo from downtown, 27-19 white team. Did you know, you know what he does when he shoots that shot? He draws back his bow. <laughs> and Chobapon, by the way, is gonna be an assistant at Nassau this year for A.J. Winder, which he was during the 12-13 season. Funky Nassau, huh? <laughs> Uh, it was the, a song of that uh, title in the 70s. <laughs> a few years before you were born, yes. Dave. Speaking of 70s music, uh, Maxine you, Nightingale I'm sure is going to be at Queensboro yeah. tonight. <laughs> Bruton Airballs. Uh, Bruton Airball. And Maxine Nightingale, remember, right back where we started from. She's going to be That's right. Queensboro tonight. She's opening for Taylor Dane. Doon, 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 doon. <laughs> opening for who? Taylor Dane. See, I'm not familiar with her. Too recent for you. That was 30 years ago. Yeah, too recent for me. 27 and 19. No, I know her song. Tell it to my heart. Yeah, uh, it was a good song. That was 30 years ago, huh? Wow. And Maxine Nightingale one was 40 years ago. Oh, well. Chobapon misses two free throws and misses at the basket. Bruton misses. Chobapon blocked from yeah. behind. We hope that Maxine made the concert because she had to pick up her social security check. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're going. Stress the lays go. it in. 29-19. <laughs> Bo, nice pass to McDonald who puts it in off glass. 29-21. Nine minutes to go in the first half. Oh, Bo to, run, to run, held it away. Almost gave it away. Now he has it taken away. <laughs> <laughs> so Tehran pushes him after he loses the ball. That was an adventure for Tehran. Tehran, don't put the ball on the floor anymore now.
All right, they're down by eight. Let's see what they come up with here. Bruton for three. No good. He, he always had a green light to shoot when he was here. He always did. Passes overthrown once or twice. Carl would pull him over and make it a yellow light. I, I, and I'll say this, Bruton always had a good look at the basket because uh, of his height mm -hmm. and, and his arm length. And he gets a good look at the basket when he shoots the ball. Bow for three, and it's good. Hey, These guys aren't shy about putting up no, the ball. No, Bow never has been. No. I think last year, the year before, Bruton had a terrific outside game, and they were going to win that game, and they just couldn't. Mm. They couldn't push it over top. And Bruton, would, that was the best game Bruton played here. He was hitting that three like it was uh, it was cash money, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it might have been against. Um, might have been against Hostos. I'm not sure. Oh, CUNY was very good last year. Queensboro had a lot of talent, and they won 0 10 in the CUNY. There were other years they would have won three or four games with that group. As Teron Simpson wow. hits, he shows us he can still shoot that three ball. Very nice. He didn't forget. He's a left-handed shooter. I feel like that's always a bonus to be left-handed. It's like defenders always forget a guy's left-handed well, for a moment. Yeah, you're playing the game from another angle. You, you know. Bruton to the basket and puts it in off glass. See, now that's what, when he was here, I would have liked to see him do more uh, of. He never Lattimore had the opportunity, though. You know, they never, they never got into the style of play where they could make that type of play. It's, he, he, he really filling it up there, isn't he? That was another three. Ron Soufant, who was the all-time leading three-point maker for the Tigers, doing it there. Who was that? Ron Soufant, number four, who just put it in, and he's going to try to do it again, and does. And the all-time leader is still the all-time leader. <laughs> and all of a sudden, this game is tied at 32. Remember a few years ago we got a buzzer beater in this game when it looked like we were in danger of overtime. Yeah. 6.34 to go in the first half. I think half. Chopin hit that. I'm not sure. Whoever it was, we were all thankful. Yeah, I think it was Chopin. A Chopin. We always say Chopin. We, we call him Benny Bucket here, which was his nickname when he played for Tom Sinickson. Nice, uh, nice man. My high school gym teacher at Forest Hills High School. Oh, yeah? I don't know if he would want to brag about that. Oh. Yours? Yes. He taught you all your athletic practice. Oh, yes. Right. And, and you more, have yeah. plenty of it. <laughs> and you still look like uh, the guy that played for the Giants in, in defensive back. <laughs> Lawrence Taylor? Do I, do I no, remind no. you of him at all? No, no, okay. no, no. The defensive back. Oh. What do you, I never know what year you're talking about, though. 19, uh, about 1990, uh, uh, 1980, 80, no, 1990, I'm sorry. Uh, 1999, <laughs> around thereabouts. 1999. Jason Seahorn, maybe? There you go. Oh. I just saw, you just saw him recently, too. Oh, all-time leader. White team leading 34-32. Amengo had the last basket while we were talking about old New York Giants. Uh, he made a little snatch on that rebound, but he couldn't put it in. Amengo to Simpson. Three rattles out. Too hard. Ow. No look, no connect. <laughs> With the putback, 36-32. The old time tip, huh? <laughs> That's the way he meant to do it. You do that on the on the playground all the time against the younger guys. Is that the move you made famous? No. Okay. 5.15 to go in the first half. Soufant. Move the ball. There's a three-pointer. And it's good. 36-35. Blue hit, team was down who, by 10. Who I hit that one? He looks Catch familiar, though. Name, yeah. hey. Blue team was down by 10 early on. The blue team is not going to give up, that's for sure. They have a lot of hard hitters on that team. With 
show of hand. Whoa! Simpson is fouled and will go to the line. I don't want to get uh, Teron hurt there. Uh, give him the ball in that kind of company. But I guess he's able to bang in there. He'll get two shots out of it here. He earned those. Got to make them. Of course, Teron was big on their, uh, th th that was their uh, last championship squad. Oh, three? Yeah. 203. I like this new uh, logo at half court, by the way. It's hard to say that that was the last Tiger championship squad. They did go to the final after that, but they lost to uh, the borough of Manhattan Community College that was, that and Tony Davis. 03, was, that was the sixth title they had won in 10 years. They haven't won one since. Yeah, and then Tom Sinekson lost uh, in, I think, 05. And the, the 08 team was a one seed, and they had the playoffs here, but they lost in the 1 4 game to Kingsborough. It was like 101 93. Terrible. Shootout. Terrible. It's been almost 15 years. They need they need another CUNY title. It's hard to believe. It'll be right. easier to make the playoffs this year with no LaGuardia. So now you have five teams going for four playoff spots, yeah, that's, not six. That's right. They'll have five, right. And it used to be like that in the old days before Hostos came in, so. And they would have that 4-5 playing game. And by the way, Queensboro won their last title against Hostos. It was a, a very young Hostos squad that made the final that year. I think they were in their first year of existence, yeah. weren't they? Whoa! What a pass to Choba Pond. And all of a sudden, the blue team leads by three. Everything was smooth on that, even the Choba Pond that came out of your mouth. 4-10 <laughs> to go in the first half. Shrestha. Kick out, Bravo, three, and we're tied at 39. I ask you, is there anything Johnny Bravo cannot do? <laughs> he, he hits the three, he oh, rebounds. He... Remember that show, Johnny Bravo? Is his first his name cartoon? Johnny? Most, his name is Mike, but the oh, show Mike. is Johnny Bravo. Mike Bravo, I'm sorry. Might be what you were thinking I'm of. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Nice touch on the... Will lay up 41 39. I'll continue to call him Mike now. <laughs> but Mike Bravo, he, he can do it all. I would have liked to see him play in his uh, Mango. playing days. Whoop. That's he also hip. played for Cynixon, right? Or Jerry Powell, maybe? Not sure. He was here before I started announcing. Yeah. I don't believe I did any of his ball games, and I was doing it a, a few years before. Well, I don't think he was in the Robert though. Alexis years. I'm gonna have to ask him. I'm gonna go down there and ask him. That's what halftime is for. Yeah. You never know how long this halftime will be, though. They might just try to speed this along. I say, Johnny. Uh, my name's not Johnny. Yeah. Forty-one thirty-nine. <laughs> Look, he's digging in on defense. He's here to play, David. Benny Bucket's directing traffic. He oh, might just take him one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, because he's got Choapan, that's why. Benny Bucket's making it 43-39. <laughs> Benny Bucket's, I like that. I like that. You're quick on the uh, improvisation. <laughs> oh. A mango. Outside to Bravo. Move the Simpson. ball, move the ball. Carter left alone for three and hits. Sinjay. Andre Carter cuts it to 43-42. Now we have a real ball game here. I'll tell you, sometimes these games, everybody comes in yeah. and just launches up threes. Yeah, but it's moving fast, this and is that's fun. what's it's good about it, because there's two minutes left in the first half, and uh, you're getting a good idea of what these guys uh, might have been able to do. <laughs> good competitive game so far. Got to put it up. A lot of threes. Oh. And a rare shot clock violation in the alumni game. A lot of threes, Dave, here in the first half. Well, like I said, you were not here last year, but Jeff Boone took over the mm. last, I think, 10 minutes of the game. I was in bed with my 102 and, or 103 I, I give myself favorite. credit because I had just said it. I said, this is the time when Jeff Boone usually takes over. And by golly, he took over. Bravo for three, no good. A mango, the offensive board, tried to get it to Bravo. Oh! Almost saved in. White team will keep it. 
good hustle by Stephen Burton. I was always rooting for Stephen Burton when he was playing here because he's a nice young man. He had so, some very good games for the Tigers. He did. And I'd like to see him go on and maybe do a little more. Mm. Who knows? Too bad his teams happened to scuffle a little bit in the standings. They weren't good, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, <clears throat> it'll be a whole new year for them, and uh, we'll see. We'll see them out here later, by the way. A mango had the shot partially blocked. Bravo puts it in off glass. Mike Bravo. Made him an Italian guy right there. 44 <laughs> 43, white team, Bruton. Bounce pass to Chobapond, who slipped. <laughs> and put up a wild one, put it back, no good. He <laughs> looked like a gazelle over there. Ben trying every which way to hang in there. Final minute of play in the first I, I half. I think while he was doing that, Dave, he was saying, you know, I never made moves like this. I mean, <laughs> I'm doing the splits over here. <laughs> never made moves like that, and I don't think he meant to make that move. <laughs> there you go. Good old let get down and get it, but not able to get it. Sufan kick out. Three-pointer from Paul, no good. Mango up ahead to Carter. And he'll lay it in off glass. Carter with a three just before, and now he gets an easy two there. Bruton left alone for three. No well, good, and you, a mango with the rebound. You knew he was going to take that shot, right? <laughs> They've got a foul with 15 seconds to go. And Mango tied up by the smallest guy on the floor right now. But big in heart, I'll tell you that. And they're saying the clock shouldn't have started yet. These well, refs are in midseason well, form. Well, He's why not letting did it go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the refs are in the Mango trying yeah. to preserve the clock. They haven't refed a game yet, probably, until this one. Carter hits a three. So got seven seconds to go. Sufant. Sufant's going to put it up. Has to put it up. They're counting it down for him, but he can't get it in. And it's 49-43 at halftime. Oh, Carter took over the last uh, four minutes there. He had a three, he had a two, he had a three. So uh, that's, uh, they got a six point lead and I'd say his two threes gave him that. And then Carter and Bravo had at least 12 points apiece in the first half by my uh, sporadic uh, scoreboard. It, 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 it's what we're gonna term it this year, the new term for the sporadic. <laughs> Let's go to the sporadic scoreboard. <laughs> Good to be back, Dave. It's just fun, and it's 70 degrees out. It's amazing. Do you know who Queensboro, the uh, the men, will play their first game against? The real game. Haven't looked too far uh, ahead of the schedule. Okay. I live life a day at a time. All right. We'll find out. So at halftime, white team uh, leading 49. Going down, by the yeah. way. Going across the court, and they're going to kind of get suited up, I guess. So. Well, let's go. I'm going to go find who Mike Bravo played with, all right? So I can tell you. That. So I can tell you that. Second half about to begin. Blue team trying to erase a six-point deficit. Mike Bravo and Sanjay Carter were leading the way for the white team in the first half. Bo and Chobapan. You almost can set the lineup the way you're doing it. So. Yeah. <laughs> and Chobapan hits a three. Chobapan. 49-46. Maybe they gave him some uh, work on his shot there at Nassau. Do you, you think? Ron Simpson couldn't answer back. Chobapan. I think he thought about diving for it and was like, no, that's all right. I was talking to Mike Bravo down there. Did you call him Mike? Yes, I did. Good. And I gave him kudos for his first day of play. 
He enjoyed that. But he was around here in 2004. Okay. And played for Cynixon. Bruton, I think, got a piece of that. There's a layup. It's 49-48. Wow, they closed the gap there. Here's Bravo with three. No good. And, and Bravo said he's actually a better outside shooter than he was when he played. And Bruton will go to the line. Now, you say, Dave, how can you say that? He's placed pro ball in the ABA with the Bronx team. And he's played against LeBron James and Sebastian Telfair and others in, in games in, that, in these leagues, wherever he's played. So he has a lot of experience. And he uh, played with a guy who played for Billy. Uh, well, he told me that Bo played for Billy Atkinson. And Bo is the outside shooter that we talked about, too. And uh, poor Billy uh, passed on several years ago, and that was a tragedy. I remember year. Jared Bo when I, uh, when I started announcing. Yeah, he could, uh, really, he could really stroke it. Uh, Bravo. No good. There's a putback counted and the foul. Very nice. First points of the half for the white team. Good veteran play there. So they're back in the lead after they had lost the lead. So when he told me he played with Telfair, against Telfair, I said, well, uh, I covered Telfair for three years over there at Lincoln. And I knew him very well. Bo, we were just talking about Jarek Bo, and he ties oh. the game with a three. Now, the last conversation I remember we had about Telfair was, what do you think he's going to do in the NBA? <laughs> he was supposed to be the next great point guard. Just didn't materialize in the NBA, but he, he, he stayed there a while anyway. There's another three, and the blue team leads by three, 55-52. It's like a three jamboree. Carter with the left hand, no good. Got his own rebound, missed again. And Bruton going to the basket. Missed twice. Yeah, he couldn't tip. He wasn't in position to really tip that. He tried with his long reach. That he has. He has a long reach, Bruton. Carter tries to tie the game with a three air ball. Bravo underneath and puts it in off glass. Well, uh, when we had that conversation, there's my good friend, Bert Beagle, who was keeping stats for us at Madison Square Garden and Telfair and his team had just won the third straight city title. And they beat a very good Cardozo team from across the street over here. Who had a very good player? He's like six foot nine, ten. And there's that whole connection with Telfair and Marbury, also. Never got to meet uh, Stefan Marbury, but he is his cousin. And uh, I asked him about if he ever like got tips from Stefan. He said, "No, I got them from my brother, who was a guard with the Providence Friars at one time." A little tip drill, and there's another tie-up. And they get whistled down, and the ball will go to Queensboro. Now, that, the last time, last few times I saw it, it was like, feels like it was on this court, because up here in Queens, they were playing over there at St. John's, but not here at the Queensboro court, which very well could have been used for that PSAL uh, very nice court here. Mm -hmm. But a lot of seating capacity, too. Teron Simpson puts up a three. No good. 55-54. Like old times, McDonald firing to Bruton. And Bruton will go to the line. Yeah, McDonald came in. Remember, he was a terrific spin player in the lane. He made those tough moves. And... 
He didn't get enough help either, though. He and, had some uh, good games. He did. He, he's not really blessed with a lot of size, but he's pretty strong, as you see. He's, he's not tall enough to really play that pivot, but he really made some good moves in there. He, he worked himself into a guy that could play down there. Well, whenever you see that pivot game by a mid-sized player, you always think of Bernard King and yeah, what, what he used to do. documentary on yesterday about him. And I used to watch him every night, so. Sanjay Carter with the basket. Down on the court, I used to watch him, and he was the only guy I ever saw made the Boston Celtics cry. <laughs> Carter Ooh. puts it in with the left hand. Sanjay Carter has about 16 points tonight, and the white team back on top, 58-57. 15-25 to go. Good surge by the white team here. And blue team answers back. It's Brian Nation. Almost on cue there. As soon as I said it, Nation hit that shot. Shrestha to the basket. So you know what that comment did, David, that I made? You jinxed them. That the comment I made, you know what it did? It woke up the nation. <laughs> well. McDonald with the rebound of the Lattimore miss. Ah. Well, foul. Bruton has a longer arm, so he got to that ball, and then he got latched onto. And we saw him dunk it a few times here, Bruton. That wasn't a real game, but you could get to the basket and elevate with those arms and jam at home. And there's Bo with the three. He's having a nice night, about 17 points. Well, he was the fella that played with Atkinson. Now they're going to have a free two. He didn't want to jam it. See, Bruton <laughs> did not want to jam it. He's not a jam type guy. So you said the white team had a nice surge, and now the blue team goes on a 7 nothing run. Shrestha for three, no good. They're, they're not Bruton. getting back at all. Will he dunk it this time? There we go. There you go. He did it very elegantly. <laughs> Wasn't a power jam. Nope. Like two points just the same. 9 nothing run for the blue team, and Bravo ends that. That was, uh, I, you know, I used to love to watch, I used to love to watch Jam was Larry Nance. I thought he was the best of all time. Yes. Oh, it's yes me. Pond. Yes, me. But, he was in that first NBA dunk contest listen, in 84. Didn't he win it? Yeah, he was, he was awesome. But if you talk to today's guys, and uh, you know, LeBron James is very good and Michael Jordan was outstanding. Uh, yeah, Larry Nance, he was big, and he could just do it nice, and it almost looked like it was easy. And I'm pretty sure he won he that 84 dunk contest, which yeah. was the first NBA one, as we know He took the ball, he jammed it over his head, back and forth. It was unbelievable. You know what, what I think did. will give him new fans is that his son is playing now, Larry Nance Jr., and some people might want to say, hey, well, let's see how good his dad was. They could watch those highlights. His Choba Pond splits yeah. the free throws. That's always fun. Of course, these guys that are playing today, they're better than their dad used to be. <laughs> Steph Curry is better yeah, than Del Curry. better than his father. His father's a good player, though. His dad got 16 years in the NBA. He was no slouch. No, he's a good player. And he hit the outside shot. and Not quite uh, like his son does. I remember uh, my, my friend Jim Carvelis used to do the games for the Knicks, and I'd be having to tra have the radio and be walking in Manhattan listening to those games, and Del Curry would come in and... Well, he's going to shoot the ball, Walt. Del Curry. He's doing the games with Walt Frazier at that time, and that's a long time ago. And Steph uh, got it. He has a, an even a radar game out here. <laughs> Trying to figure out who's being subbed out, and it's Benny Buckets. But it'll be good to see two teams different in the final now, you know. Two different teams. Other than Golden State and oh, Cleveland? Oh, you get tired of it after a while. 
Well, I think it's it, it bugs people because usually the two or three best teams are in the West, and Cleveland gets to get through whatever they go through in the East. Which I want to see the Boston Celtics get back there again. Under the direction of Danny Ainge. I think the NBA would always like Celtics hey, Lakers. By the way, Danny Ainge could shoot the ball from out out there too, but he's now running the Celtics. Well, he was on the Celtics in the 80s, and I remember he went to Portland and made the 92 finals, and then he went to Phoenix and made the 93 finals. Wherever yeah, he went, teams yeah, won. Yep. Bravo off glass. Bravo hanging in there, giving uh, the white team a chance to come back there within four, and there's still a lot of time, 13 minutes. The defense is a little tougher in this half. I think the competitive juice has got flowing when that score was close at halftime. These guys went, hey, we're out here for fun. And then a little bit of it creeps in. Hey, we're, we want to win. By the way, during the offseason, I had a chance to talk to the Iona coach, Tim Clues, who I haven't talked to. He was coaching at CW Post. He's doing very well and hoping for a big year there for the Iona College Gales. I, I believe he said they made it to the NCAA last year, so. They're playing St. John's this year. And Tufan hits a three. You know what, that could probably be a very good game. You know, they haven't played, I St. John's hasn't played Iona since 95, so you probably did that game. And Iona this In year fact, I, is a mango hit. Iona's I, been looking at that schedule going. I don't That's think when we I played did the game, but I was there at the garden when Iona beat them. <laughs> <laughs> And we were very, very deflated. <laughs> I was doing the color analyst in that game. And I think everybody was deflated. So, you know, Iona, Not Iona. came into the garden and made mincemeat out of them. Not supposed to do that. I know somebody who was uh, at one of these Iona events as the shot hit the wire. And, some, and Iona, they talk about the upcoming season, and they go, hey, we have a new court, we have new facilities, and this and that. And they go, and we're playing St. John's. Yeah, big, a big thing, right? Yeah, they've, got, they've got that game circled. Yeah, somewhere. Lattimore to the basket. No good. I think he's, I think he's playing Syracuse also, Tim Clues. He told me he's playing Syracuse. Soufant has been draining threes all afternoon. He's the all-time leader. So what, when I said, Tim, you're playing Syracuse, you're playing them there, right? <laughs> of course, they could come down and play them at the Garden, but they're not going to do that. Sometimes you get those holiday festival games. You never yeah. know. How about Syracuse football beating number two Clemson wow. yesterday? Who saw that coming? Big win, big win. And the other, the number six team got, got smoked. You never uh, know these Friday night games. They could be a little uh, fluky because everybody's geared up for Saturday. Don't overlook those Friday night games. 73-65 blue team, 11.02 to go. I usually listen to a lot of Yankee games, but I did listen to that Syracuse game last night. I was very interested in that. A mango hits the first. When I, when I saw it in the paper, I saw they were playing Clemson. I got to listen to this game, and I didn't think it was going to be the game it was, but all right, it's a seven-point game here. A nation... Tried to go up and under and didn't really have the angle. Yeah, he, he got caught under the basket a little bit, or else he would have rolled that in. Flamengo misses. Bo fired the pass. Here's Sufant, another three, and it's good. Sufant has about five threes today. It's 76-66. Bravo tries to answer back and does. 76-69. Like I said, it, Mike said he's a better three-point outside <laughs> shooter than he used to be. So Soufant with the little heat check there. I think he felt someone was coming up behind him. Look at Mike go. He is ready to take it to the hoop again. All you could say is bravo. He'll go to the line. Well, you never know where you'll end up seeing these guys, whether it's a, another D3, a D2, the ABA, like bravo. Independent. Uh, well, he said he, he's playing in the ABA, which is a professional league. Yeah. Right now, right now he's playing. 
And there's two more points for Bravo. I asked him, I said, Mike, are you playing? You play anywhere? Yeah, I play in the semi pros right now. Very good. Oh, he must be about 32 uh, years old. Jarek Bowe with the three. Yeah, nice uh, three by Bo. And we were talking about Bo with him. A mango to Simpson, like old times, although Simpson couldn't yeah, put it in. That was his old move, but he couldn't put it in. And I remember I was working the game down there at BMCC, and I was telling uh, Gary Axelbeck, who was working with, uh, they were playing their nemesis, BMCC. I said, he took that, he took that from the guy at Cardozo, uh, Thrill Hill, that move. And I thought he played with uh, Hill, but he did not put, according to Tehran, he did not play with Hill. He played the year after Hill, so, with Cardozo. Remember a few years ago when Mango and Simpson were on opposing teams and they went one-on-one -on -one against each other, which all the new guys got a kick out of. Simpson with the rebound. And he goes up ahead to a Mango. And the foul is called. And they whistle him. And uh, this fella Hill, by the way, who played with Cardozo, uh, Dave, he was a small, he was a guard, but he was like an Allen Iverson type of talent, and everybody at the Garden showed up to watch him. Uh, it was when the Giants were playing in the Super Bowl. And, uh, <laughs> uh, they, they beat the Vikings in the championship game that year. Yeah. And Hill was exciting. He went up over the rim and he stuffed the ball, and he was only about 5'11". Uh, <laughs> Nice move by Anthony Paul. And Bo broke it up. The white team got it back, and there's two points. 81-73, blue team. They needed, those. they needed those two points. There's a foul. Speaking of Iverson, were you at that Georgetown-UConn game, the Iverson against Allen one? No. Ray Allen goes no. midair and... He's about no. to pass it to a guy in the corner and then decides to shoot. And but I, shot. I had my uh, announcing experiences doing Iverson because he played St. John's at the Garden and these guys were telling me who Allen, Allen Iverson was and I was going, really? And then he got in the game and he went on to the basket. He jammed the ball over his head. I said, well, he's pretty good. <laughs> And you got Ray Allen before he was oh, super famous. What a great player. 81-73. And you said a nice guy when you dealt with him, right? One of the best. That pass is overthrown. But boy, could he kill you. <laughs> Not nice to guys defending him on the he's uh, perimeter. He's a baby face killer. There you go. They have really extended that lead now, Dave, uh, to a 10-point lead. So... The white team is going to have to find something here. Eight minutes to go. There's a mango. Nice pass. Oh, oh, oh. Hey. Uh, Ryan Nation answers back, 85-75. Nation not letting them come back with that little jumper there. Pass broken up, deflected out by Anthony Paul. The subs coming in, McDonald and Choba Pond and Bruton. Uh, the biggest thrill I ever had though was going to the Big East press day. I'll continue it after the, this is a big possession here. They're down by 10. And Bruton guarding his old coach. That's that's right. Huh? A shot clock violation. And not so old coach, by the way. No, no. Just last year. His old uh, his old young coach. And Bruton is fouled by Simpson. And fouled by his old assistant coach right there. <laughs> anyway, you go to the first, uh, and you get the announcing job, you go to your first Big East uh, luncheon. And they have it down in Manhattan at one of the fancy hotels, as Steve Summers would say. Fancy schmancy. And uh, you, you go to the table then and you interview the coaches at, at, at each table. And there is John Thompson as big as life. And it, it was a big thrill. 
big thrill. I said, that's John Thompson right here. How do you like Patrick Ewing? He's coaching Georgetown now. Unbelievable. I, I think that's where he should be. I think that's where he should be. Sufant, another three, and it's good. Well, I think he might really be the opened MVP it up. of this game. They have opened it up now. The hustle by Bruton. It is a gaping lead. Sufant. Oh, come on. Bruton. Passing clinic from the blue team, and I it's 91-75. I think the white team's just running out of gas a little bit now. They, they, they're letting them run all over them. Come on, guys. Here's a mango. He knew that shot was off right away and got his own rebound and put Big it in. Rebound. Big rebound. He's playing the old school basketball right there. Under six minutes to go. And then these guys will team up and face the new Tigers. I would say you got to see a couple of threes coming up here from the white team. Hey, Sufant for three. That one was well defended by Carter. Oh, a little basket hanging. Ah, I Go can't, upon can't with the rebound. It. Can't do it. Benny Buckets kick out to Bruton, <laughs> and he hits a three. Benny Buckets. <laughs> Bruton. And now it's turning into a bit of a uh, free-for-all, I guess. 94-79. It's turning into a rout. I think now that it's a bit of a blowout, they're conserving energy. Bruton. Bruton. Yeah, thought about it. You know, he's actually better on the three-point shot. <laughs> yeah, I think it was too close for him. Yeah. The depth perception was thrown he off. He gets a good look at the basket from out there, and then when he moves in, I think it, it, the arm angle gets a little different. Sufant, another three. Oh, Sufant, I got to give him player of the game for what I, he I did think so. I think that's about seven threes now. Hang, hang in there. Him. Oh, good, good, solid play under there. So 97-81, under four and a half minutes to play. Uh, getting back to uh, to Mike Bravo, he said they came before uh, Steely. You remember Steely, right? Well, there were a few, right, because it was here, Gamal Steele. They were at Queensboro. Yeah, no, the... Jeffrey Steele. Yeah. The, and Jared Bow hits the a three. Guy. Gives the blue team 100 points. In fact, Queensboro finished in last place, but Steele was able to get them to the semifinal that year in the tournament. Two more points for Bravo. Probably the player of the game for the white team. Bravo for him. 100 to 83, but this is a real lopsided score, and Chapapan trying his hand at a three from straight away. That was like a that was like a DeBusher three right there, <laughs> really hard. Except there were no threes. When, well, when he, he shot him from three. He, <laughs> 100 to 83. And a charge. <laughs> I and wouldn't want to be. Runs it, over a mango. Yeah, I don't want to be the guy getting in the way over there. There's a little LaGuardia Queensboro rivalry, right? Did you see right? what Carl did? Carl was yeah. faking that he got really shaken up there. <laughs> we think he was faking. He popped up though. Yes. Now he's given a little direction here, Carl. A little coaching coming into play. There it is. And not Simpson. Good pass. See, Simpson was a point guard, so he was a good passer. He was a real good passer and you get that ball to the guys on that team Sufant, you know he wants to take another one gives it up to Bo instead and Bo will take it and throw it off the side of the board and he had a guy named Phil Mond I think who could get over the rim and a couple of guys 248 to go 185 
Here's a mango. Carl was a member of that last Queensboro championship team in the CUNY. But then he went to play at Baruch College. And from time to time, we see uh, Ray Rankis, the former Baruch coach, show up here to watch a game. He's doing his uh, scouting. Bruton for three. It's good. 103-87. Hey! And he's dealing Bruton. Couldn't put it in. <laughs> Goes right to Soufant, another three, and it's good. And that's, I think, eight threes now. That's going good when you just stand there and the ball deflects right to you, and you're all alone. Not at all. <laughs> oh, yeah, the guy that uh, at Simpson played would get the ball over the rim would be Johan York. Okay. He would get over the rim, this guy. Uh, great jumper. They had a good team, and... Uh, in 95, uh, 205 in 95. Chobapan. I, I believe it was more like, yeah, it was 205, wasn't it, David? I have to go back and look again. It was 203, actually. That was that last Queensboro title team. Yep. Bo hits again. He's having a nice game. And Johan York was the MVP. He, we don't see him out here on these dates, but we thought we'd mention him anyway. He deserves it. 108.89. Sure, sure does. And there are a number of Queensboro players, great Queensboro players that do not come out for this game, but they are noteworthy. Not forgotten. Final minute of play. Bravo for three. Hit. 108 92. Hey, Bravo, and Mango uh, takes it away from Chobapon. Bro Bravo has to have 20 points. Uh. Oh, easily. Maybe close to 30. That'll help. It's 108 yeah. 95. Improving his point total, but he's not going to be able to bring the white clad Queensboro team back. The Tigers are going to lose to the Tigers. That's interesting. And the Tigers, Tigers will losing the Tigers. to the Tigers. That's good to say. You know, if Tigers have to lose, at least they're losing to the Tigers, right? Always the optimist. Bravo with his third three in about a minute. Hey, hey Bravo, what are you doing? <laughs> There's nine seconds left, and he's still putting them up. Look at that. That was from Bo, I think. Bruton trying to beat the buzzer, and he misses. Whoa. And the ref almost gets sculled by uh, the final shot. They teach you that move in rough school. <laughs> Cover the head when that ball goes to the rafters. Well, 108 to 98. That was a pretty good game for a while, but... The blue team just kept uh, coming. 65 points in the second half. Wow. And look at this. Look at the look at the uniforms for the Tigers the over there. The new Tigers there. wearing yellow, yeah. and we'll get to see that in the yeah. next game. Quite a change, huh? Uh, yeah. So a fun one, and we'll be back with game two, the final. Blue team 108, white team 98. <laughs> 